Hello everyone and welcome back to Gouage 101. Okay, so um, first of all, let me apologize because this week had gone by and I really didn't even notice uh, what day it was. I didn't know what day it was. I, I um, woke up and realized that it is Friday and I haven't posted on Thursday like I said I would. So uh, I want to apologize for that. The week, you know, in this um, this current atmosphere that we're living in with COVID and all of that, I sometimes I, I lose track of the time, you know, um, you know, I lose track of the day. So with that, I want to apologize and just get on with uh, with uh, this uh, this week's episode of Guaj One Hundred One, and what I want to introduce is this idea of painting directly. Um, it is a way of painting that I usually do with oil paint um, and where uh, I, I'm not drawing in uh, anything as far as, uh, you know, putting in some kind of preliminary drawing to paint over. What I am doing is basically uh, just approaching this as if I'm painting from a live model and I am... Um, painting more directly um, in, in al, al prima sort of fashion. And I, I do this because one, it's a challenge. Two, it's, it gives me an opportunity to, to see and paint more broadly. Um, and I, I'm using, like I'm starting off with this, this flat brush and I'm not trying to draw it in with a round brush. You know, because I, I, I'm more interested in this broad statement of the lights and the darks and not in trying to figure out how to draw the nose or the eyes. Now, this could be a challenge. And as you, you know, as this painting develops, it did lead into some problems as I continue to paint. But um, it isn't a bad problem to have because, you know, you one of the things is you take the chances with this and you try to figure out how you know how to paint more broadly make a broader statement um and not how not to not to be so caught up in the details and so it, it's a different approach you know it's a um i wouldn't say it's a less exacting approach because i'm still trying to go for some accuracy but I'm realizing as I put down, it brings home the idea that everything's a, 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 a guesstimate. Everything's a guess. And that as you put down the brush strokes, you realize that as you continue to paint, you're going to make some changes. Um, so, you know, that that's the whole idea behind this. I'm, I'm, I realize that I'm going to make some changes. I realize that this is not going to be perfect also gives the gives you more of the feeling of the idea of working as working in paint as a sculptor would work with clay where you know you 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 add and subtract you you uh you know you mold things you push things around till you get what you want it's not perfect at first you know the, the clay is unformed could be a solid block of a uh, uh, rectangular form or it could be just a blob of nothing and as you toss you know as you play with it you shape it to what you want so in the same way I'm doing this with gouache now gouache is very forgivable you know it allows you to uh, to cover mistakes you know but at the same time it's a lot easier to do this for me anyway it's a lot easier for me to do this in oils but it it's, that doesn't mean this that doesn't have its value because sometimes you can be surprised by what comes out of this so that you can apply it to your work going forward it could be that this painting will be a total bomb like i said there was a lot of struggle in this painting till i got it to look close to the way that I want it you know but um, but it gives you a sense of uh, uh, more of a freedom and more of allowing you to 
get more familiar with the paints and what it can actually do than to be so strict and so stiff with it. You know, just give yourself a chance. So, and that's what I'm doing here. This, I don't know whether some may feel that this is kind of advanced. I, I don't think so. When I painted this way in oils, I was in high school. So I think it's it's a, um, a good opportunity to get more familiar with the paints and um, to, to let yourself go, not to be so uh, so tight with you know with, with um, trying to get everything uh, so tightly correct. Give yourself some freedom to not just make mistakes but discover some things that you would that you would not have if you hadn't taken some chances. And it's okay to mess up, you know. I think one of the things is that if I had to do this over again, I would probably do this on a bigger board or I would uh, use the same side board and um, try and make it a lot simpler than what I tried to do here. But, um, but you know, you'll see as this painting develops, and how you know the the the, the video progressive progresses, and then you can say what do you think about it, you know, and, and uh, um, see where we go there. Okay, so I got a good distance here in this painting, and for, at this point, you can really get the feeling of that uh, forming something out of clay kind of feeling, you know, that I was talking about earlier, where I'm pushing the paint, I'm taking out things, I'm adding, I'm adding in things, and I'm making whatever changes that I need to make, or as I see to make them. So they're, they're uh, but at the same time. I'm keeping within a certain amount of values. From here on in, I'm going to try to stick to this value range. I got probably the darkest areas that I can in, like you can see it in the eyes and in the hair right next to the ear. That There's probably nothing in the painting that will be darker than that area. You know, I'll have some areas just as dark, but not darker than that. So other than that, um, what I would add is my lightest light, which would probably come in, which will come in the highlights. So that would be something that I would work on at the very end and not something that I'm going to be so concerned about right here. So um, 
like I said, but the other thing is that I'm going to begin to introduce a more variety of color as I go on. Right here, I'm work, I've worked mostly with um, yellow ochre, uh, cadmium orange, Naples yellow, burnt sienna, and burnt umber with touches of ultramarine blue and a little touch of quinar uh, it's so hard for me to pronounce this quinonochrome red okay so i don't even know if i'm pronouncing it right but it's the red that i use and it's a very it's a, it's um it's a red that i use in place of alizarin crimson which i used to use i had uh, learned since that alizarin crimson is a fugitive color so and by fugitive that means that uh, given time with exposure to light that the color will be given and that's why it's called fugitive color whereas um, quinonochrome is a very strong and permanent color and it's called a light fast color so the, the colors that I choose are mostly light fast and um, they, there's a bit more there's more permanence to them um, so uh, that but that is the the the, the colors of the, like I said the the yellow ochre the Naples yellow the cadmium orange the burnt sienna burnt umber uh, alizarin not alizarin crimson I'm sorry quinonochrome red and um, ultramarine blue so there isn't a lot of variation in terms of the uh, the color temperature at this point um, though I'm going to start to work that in. Because I notice from the reference, there's like the where there's light, there's a touch of blue, so it gets cooler in the light, and um, there's like a play of warm and cool in the shadows, but the shadows are mostly warm. There's a bit of a cool reflection here and there, but I'm going to try to keep the shadows as simple as possible and not work too much into them. You know, I think in uh, in the reference that I shot for this, um, there is, you can see it on the corner, on the top left corner, you can see the reference that I used there. And it's, you know, it, it's slightly different than what I had. But of course, um, this is an accurate, this is not an accurate representation of what I'm looking at. Because on the screen, you know, the camera is taking a picture of the screen. So it looks a little bit different. I don't know if uh, if you've ever taken a picture of a, a, a monitor, a screen. You can see that it looks different in the picture than what it acts than what your eyes actually see. So, um, but that's what's going on there. Uh, but even with that, I'm not copying the photograph to you know to just basically give you a, a just a. I don't know, a, a variation of the photograph. I'm using the photograph as reference to and reinterpreting it. Uh, I still want it to look recognizable. I still want it to look realistic. I want to give it the appearance of having been there and painted this person sitting in front of me. And so I'm using it as reference. I'm not like I, I don't want to paint the shadows the way I actually see them in the photograph. I want to make those shadows a lot and, um, and see if I don't put in so much variation and just see it as a shape. Um, but the temptation when you're working from a photograph is to give you the appearance, uh, to give you a copy of the photograph. So I'm going to try and fight that, um, that, uh, I'm going to try and fight that that uh, um, compulsion to do that all right
So I've gotten pretty far in the painting right about here. And um, this is where the problems really begin for me. Uh, and I'm having problems with the way, uh, especially the eyes, the bridge of the nose that connects the eyes together and the space in between there. Um, so I think that I, I am really striving to make up for the fact that I didn't draw the things in, you know, um, and I'm striving to make up for that. But in hindsight, I should not have. In hindsight, I think it would have been better for me to think simpler and not try to draw and paint, you know. Um, I, I don't know if that makes sense, but I think that in hindsight, maybe that is something that I will bring into it the next time, you know, I do this. But for right now, it is a fight to um, make these corrections for the rest of this painting. And that's the chance that you're going to take when you're painting this way, because you're knowing that, like I said before, that when you put down a brush stroke, you're putting it down with the, with the knowledge that you are going to probably change that area. You're just making a guess that this is a correct, that this is as close a guess as you can come to making this correct. And you know that you're going to make changes because as you continue to work and compare other areas of the painting, you see, I don't, I don't just work on the eye or work on the nose and then move on from there. That doesn't work for me. You know, I'm trying to build this up as, as, uh, uh, as a whole, you know, as far as the, 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 the face and all the features of the face, the head and just working up as a whole. So, you know, it's just like one part of the painting has to work with the other part of the painting. The way the lips and the eyes and the nose and the ears line up, they all line up together and they all work to make the head. They don't work separately, you know. So I don't do it like doing a jigsaw puzzle, something like that. I, I try to work on the thing as a whole and bringing up as a whole, give it a more, um, more kind of, I don't know, organic you know, feel to it, just that, you know, it, it works more solidly, you know, than trying to do it piecemeal. Because you wind up making corrections as you go along. You know, you wind up not, uh, uh, um, when something is wrong in one area, you, you know, well, let's be honest, I'm doing that here, <laughs> you know. I, I'm thinking as I'm saying this, I'm doing that here, but I'm working at all of them at the same time, not one by one by one moving on to the next thing. You know, I'm trying to make it all work together. And, um, and, and it's easier to think of the head as a whole unit than to think of it in all, than to think of it in all these separate little pieces. Because if you draw one eye, you know, the, 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 when you move on to the next eye, you're going to have to keep compare you know you you do keep comparing either way you work but when you bring it up together you don't have to be so tight with it i i don't know if that makes any sense anyway this is the way i work and this that's the reason why is this more comfortable for me to think of it as a, a whole unit um rather than to think of it in bits and pieces um so but with that, I mean, I'm thinking also in terms of I should have simplified this painting, especially since I've been working so small. Um, but these are my struggles. The struggle with the drawing at this point, I should be more concerned with painting rather than drawing. Uh, but that is a lesson learned as I move forward. Um, and that is one of the things you learn in this way of painting when I'm talking about direct painting you're going to encounter some things and even as I'm explaining it to, to you there's some things I think about as to why I paint this way and how would I approach it the next time you know and um, realizing that you know what there there are like a lot of different ways to paint 
you know, like I said, I said, um, I wouldn't paint a certain way, like one eye at a time. But there are people who paint that way, and it works for them. And um, but you know, as I work on this thing, I am discovering, as I'm uh, reevaluating, as I'm explaining it to you guys, um, I'm realizing the many different ways I could have approached this. Uh, but that's what painting in this way will do. It's not, you know, sometimes when you paint, you're painting, you're, 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 you're experiencing what you're doing and you're adding to your knowledge that you bring to the next painting or the next drawing or whatever. And um, when you paint, like I said, when you paint like this, you give yourself the opportunity to mess up. And you give you an opportunity to discover some things that you would not have discovered if you just uh, if you just stayed in, in in that safe area, you know. So this type of painting, this direct type of painting, like I said, for me works better in oil painting, but the experience is still the same, and it, it's it's something you know it adds to. It adds to your work. It adds to the things that you do from here on, that I, I would do from here on in. Because like I said, I just, just a lot of ideas, as even as I am explaining it, come to my mind as to how I could have approached this, how I uh, um, uh, made this better or, you know, or easier in terms of my mindset, you know, um, like I said, I think that in hindsight, simpler would have been better, especially for the size I'm working at. You know, simpler would have been better. I think that, um, and I think that working in this size is a good idea than working big because it teaches me to work simple. You know, I think if I worked bigger, I would have been more, uh, more tempted to draw the thing in. So, but. Um, it, it is an adventure. It is a, a way of thinking that will lead you to other things. So I've gotten really far in this now, right? Almost to the end um, as far as this painting is concerned. And I came a long way. You know, I had fun with adding the cool colors, playing with the cool sticking to uh, just a few value steps. 
not too far from what I um, I, I had um, started out with when I said I was going to stay within a certain amount of values. Um, and uh, so how do I feel, right? How do I feel about what I've done so far? Well, it's interesting. I think that I am still bothered by um, how the eyes looked. Um, I'm st there's some things that I like, some things that I'm not crazy about. Um, so the eyes, like I said, I got too caught up in the drawing. Um, and I should have made that simpler. And, and that that's the thing in, in hindsight is just simplicity just a lot less here yeah, I'm, I'm using uh i'm going back and forth between these flat broad brushes and these uh, um pointed round brushes right and i think sticking with the um with the flat round flat i'm sorry flat uh brushes a little bit more would have helped me in um not being so overly concerned with the drawing. I should have think, thought how I could have solved the eyes more broadly. Like I said, that is something learned as you go through this and as you bring to your next painting. Now, it takes a great deal of practice to do something like this um, and practicing actually doing it. You know, if, uh, like I said, I, I've been doing the draw, preliminary drawing before I painted and that's more what I've been used to but actually doing this more often would um, help I believe would help my painting immensely because I would be thinking more broadly and more painterly rather than um, noodling around with the drawing so this was great to do in that respect because it adds to the vocabulary, right? The, the adds to the way that I paint. And um, so this is something that I would highly recommend as far as painting. Even if you don't do it all the time or consistently, you should be able to challenge yourself with something like this and see where it leads you as far as your painting. Because even like the painting is a total bust you would have learned something from the experience that you can carry with you into your next painting. Sometimes when you when I draw, I um I'm drawing on I, I'm quick to throw it out if it really doesn't please me and I move on to the next drawing. You know, I think that it's okay to have the attitude that the painting that you're working on is going to be your masterpiece. It's going to be the best thing that you've done. Uh, it's said that the painter Norman Rockwell, the illustrator Norman Rockwell, the painter illustrator, um, said that whenever he started out an illustration, it was going to be his masterpiece. Now, he said, at least in his own words, it never worked out that way. He wasn't as enthused about the ending of the painting, but it, the start was always the start of this is going to be it. This is going to be the what I'm known for. Um, so it's okay to have that attitude. It's, it's okay to be critical of your work and to know that um, that it, it, it may not be exactly what you wanted. I, 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 I posted this image online and I said something to that effect about how I don't know how I felt about the painting, but I knew that when I painted this, I gave it my best effort, and that in itself was satisfying. You know, so whatever lessons that I took from it, I can bring into the next painting. So, um, and and that that's it. That's it, really. You're going to you you're going to have an experience when you paint, and it's all it's not always going to be like that masterful thing. Maybe it would be something that. You would chuck out, that you would throw away, that you don't want to keep. But let it be that the experience was something that you can bring into your next painting. Whether it was a failure or a success, it doesn't matter. That is something that you can bring into your next work that will improve what you do from, you know, from, from here on then, right? So um, already, like I said earlier... You know, I had a flood of thoughts about how 
I would approach this differently, how I can improve it, uh, what I would do. And that is what I get from the experience. I didn't think the painting came out terrible. I think the painting came out pretty good. Um, I think it could have been better, you know, and that that's it. You know, I think when I when I uh, made something, some statements similar online, I had a response where people had told me that, oh, no, it's fine. It's works. It, you know, it's beautiful, whatever. But, you know, it's it's this this honest self self reflection that you have to have in order to continue to improve your work, because without that, then you're just doing the same thing over and over again. And then you got to ask yourself, well, why? You know, why are you doing the same thing over and over again? Don't you want it to, don't you want to improve what you're doing um, with every painting, right? So I keep evaluating my work that way. So a good thing to consider in, with this Gouage 101 is that you take chances and also evaluate what you're doing is it you know make sure that whatever you do is your best effort and make sure that um that you know win or lose you know uh um make a great painting or make a terrible painting that you would have learned something from it so that you can carry over to to you know to push you further in your next painting fight for it though fight for the painting as hard as you can until you know that you you can't go any further so that way you know that you've given it your best effort you know so other than that you know here i am on the on the um practical side in terms of brush stroke for brush stroke what i've done um uh i i you know you saw in the beginning it was mostly these warm colors I introduce uh, the the cool colors where I saw them or where I saw sometimes I made up where areas where I thought areas can like under under underneath her lower lip the chin area I added a, a kind of cool blue I'm trying to do the same thing around the eyes you know and this is where I'm thinking that maybe I needed to be more blunt with it and uh, that's one of the things that need to change uh, going forward or something that I can try later, you know, uh, with some other painting where I'm more blunt with uh, on what I'm doing and trying not to be so subtle. And, you know, and the subtlety comes from really trying to hold on to the drawing. And I think that I need to let go a little bit more and let it be more painterly i don't know if that makes sense but i'm trying um when i'm talking about drawing try not to noodle and 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 uh, uh um and to think more broadly think more of the whole thing and um working together you know um so there's some things that I emphasize that maybe I, I, I shouldn't have emphasized, you know? Maybe I should have left it more broad uh, and uh, more general. And, um, and I guess that's it. That's the thing that I would take into the next thing, is just continue to work to make the paintings more broad and general and to decide um, what really needs to be specific, you know? Well, you know what? That could be an episode for a later time. You know, just what do you really need in order to make the painting work? Um, I, I believe there was something... There was... I'm remembering in, an, in, in, in a, um, something that I've read where uh, the painter Frank Vegetta was talking to... Um, talking to some other artist and uh the illustrator frank Fajetta, painter i just so many ways people defined or, or make a difference between a painter and an illustrator i really don't um that that's just me i, I think that um the painter frank Fajetta, uh um talked about how he was watching uh, uh, um 
some sort of movie, something on the TV, and he freezed, I think he freezed the frame or something like that, and it was a, a, an image where not all of the features were so defined, a lot of it was lost in shadow, and he was saying, that's all you really need, you know, that's all you really need to make the image readable and make it strong. Um, the more you break it up, the weaker it gets to me. The more it, it's, um, it's generalized, it becomes more of a powerful image and it's easier to stay with you. That's why, um, you know, that's why you, you would see a lot of these graphic images that are really simple and because those simple images stay with you, you know. Um, those uh, breaking it up into simple shapes and then um, when you start going in you you can be awed by detail but then you know it it, it kind of loses something in, in getting all those details you know because we don't see all these details at once when we look at a photograph or um, you know we're looking at a photograph and something we're seeing how the photograph doesn't discriminate it you, you see a lot of details all over the photograph when you're looking at life even with your vision you have a field of vision that anything beyond that field of vision is blurred you know unless you turn your attention specifically to that so already your your you know your your eyes and your brain are working to simplify what you see so that only what's important remains. And um, that's the way I like to approach my painting, just thinking that I'm simplifying what I see so that only the important things remain, and that's what I want to communicate to my audience because those things are what I put aside in my own mind that are important. This is if what I see is interesting enough for me to want to paint, I want my audience to see what I think is interesting because then I have something to share, you know. So um, I, a lot of this goes beyond just the technique of painting. It's the, the, the thinking behind what I am painting. So I don't know if this is... Uh, a lot to put in, in terms of gouage 101 um, but anyway I, I hope that in doing this and that like this isn't too soon this is a way of painting but I think that you know what sometimes you take some chances and you see where it leads you to and um, that may be a great thing for you you know that um, painting this way might be a new way of, of looking at things that you never considered you know so in that way you know it's helpful to you
Okay, so right now this is actually the next day. And after a day, I looked, I, I thought about the painting and I thought about the things that were bothering me, mostly the area of the eyes and the nose. And I just wanted to, you know, I thought about it and I wanted to fix those areas. And actually what I went ahead and did was I tried to, I, I scanned the image and I tried to post it online. When I looked at the scanned image, I just was not happy with it. So I said, let me just spend another day, another couple of hours on this, right? And, and uh, see what I can change with the painting. And mostly what I'm thinking about doing was what, um, what uh, after seeing it and, and, you know, after evaluating it, uh, I was already thinking at this point of, um, of simplifying. You know, and so I made the changes in the eyes, the nose, but still I think that um, going forward that I would do it from the, from the outset. I would think about simplifying it from the outset and, uh, um, and uh, leaving, uh, leaving out some of the details that I did put in. So, um, and... Uh, that is the way I would rather see it in terms of uh, what I talked about earlier, you know, as far as human beings and our field of vision and what we take in. And I, I would even be doing less than that, but I would rather push it to see how the image would um, benefit from it, you know, and, and rather than get too caught up in the rendering. Uh, sometimes rendering can be great. Like I said, um, people uh, ooh and ah about something that's rendered really well. And it takes a lot of skill to do that. Uh, and I'm not saying that um, that's what I'm skilled at. Uh, um, what I, you know, that is uh, something that, you know, that you can push towards or you can push the other way and find something that, you know, you want to communicate that you feel might be even more interesting than just the details because um, I'm looking at the effect of the overall image rather than these little bits and pieces that you might, um, you know, that you that uh, you you might find interesting. You know, it's um, when you go to a museum. And you look around at the paintings there. There are paintings. There are paintings, say, um, I wish I could remember the artist's name. Uh, but there was a, like a Dutch painting, a uh, guy who lived around the same time as Rembrandt. And he did these paintings that were highly detailed, you know, um, and more so than you would see in a Rembrandt. Not because Rembrandt is unable to do that, because that's not what he concentrated on, you know. Um, but... The fact that I remember Rembrandt and I don't remember this guy's name is telling because the images made by Rembrandt were a lot more compelling. Not because of, um, you know, it, it wasn't because of details that you got caught up in the images. What are you painting and how are you communicating that thing that you're painting is interesting to you. It made it interesting for you to paint. It could be that, in, you know, that, that you were interested in the details i don't think every details i think some details i think when you do every detail you're more showing a skill that is incredible even enviable but not entirely necessary for um for the painting whereas you know you you want to use what you see to to give an uh, to to give an indication of why it's interesting to you. What are you communicating with your painting? You know, and it's another thing that I got in trouble for on uh, Twitter. I made a similar comment about you know not you know just how it's carried away with detail and a person's technical skill, but they don't think about well what is the person saying with that technical skill. Are we just to enjoy the technical skill and that's it? 
you know, or are we, um, or, or is there something more there? Is there something about why is this interesting? Why are you making me look at this? Why is this interesting to you? You know, so, um, and then how do you take a photo which is already made and all the information is there? How do you take that and make and do something creative with it other than just copying it? You know, it's something to think about, right? Um, so, you know, uh, I want to encourage you, go ahead and try this and, um, and tell me what you think. There's a lot of opinions that go around with, um, with art. Some people, I, I even saw where someone had said that, uh, using photographs is cheating. I don't think so. I think copying a photograph, uh, without putting in your own edits, without thinking about, you know, why are you using this photograph? Is it a reference or is it a copy? Is it something that you use to help you with your painting or is something that you use strictly to copy from, you know? So, you know, you might want to indicate how you feel about that. I don't think it's cheating to use photos. And that is really a question that has been settled for a long time. If you look at um, some of uh, the, pa the painters that people talk about, they admire because of their technical skill or something else, you know, you can see that they've used photography. Uh, Muka used photography. Um, uh, Thomas Aikens used photography. Um, you know, of course, there's the illustrators like Norman Rockwell. And you got guys like J.C. Leyendecker who didn't use photography and thought photography was a sin. And you should, you know, he worked from the model. And he's also very creative, even in working from the model. His, his thing was, even in life, he wasn't just looking for a recreation of it. He was using life as a reference to his uh, um, images, you know, so, and then... He would sometimes, you know, use photography or photo reference for um, bits and pieces of his background or whatever, uh, supporting information, but not the main topic. You know, so, um, so different people have different views of uh, how you use photos and, and so forth. Interesting, too, because I believe the school he went to... Um, uh, he, he was very influenced by Mucha, and uh, um, Leyendecker went to school in Paris. You know, so, it's interesting, right? Uh, but, so, here I am, trying to fix this and make a better painting out of this. And um, so far, you know, what, what I wound up with is something that I was able to with and in terms of, I, I didn't think it was a bad painting, but I also walked away with, you know, thinking of how I can do this even better next time.
all right so I'm just about done here and um, like I said I think that uh, in hindsight I would approach it differently but I wouldn't have learned that without having had this experience and then it helping me to think about how would I approach this so I want to encourage you guys I, like I said maybe this might be a little bit advanced maybe not maybe for uh, gouage 101 this is something that you can try that will lead you to other things as far as discovering things that you can bring to your painting this experience I know for me it, it, it's a lot better and it's a little freeing to paint like this um, and and with with gouache or with any any uh, medium and it gives you a way of thinking that you would not about your painting that you would not have if you did not have the experience and everything about painting for the artist's point of view I mean um, people will experience what you've what you have done but you would have experienced the act of painting which is different you know and it's more richer for you as an artist than anyone can get from just viewing the 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 the, the final image right you as an artist would have had the experience of making the work which is different and which is more involving and more enriching i i feel because it's something that you can continue to grow on and add to the work that you do uh, as you continue to grow as an artist um, and you know add to the information that you've already had you just keep on adding you keep on changing you keep on growing you become a better artist um, so again I want to encourage you to give this a try give this a shot you know paint um, more directly paint in more a la prima fashion with the with the uh, gouache paint and um, see what you come up with see what you learn from it and um, what it does to add to you know to, to uh, your work um, and it's I mean it's pretty scary I guess you know because you take more of a chance of failure um, but it also gives you a chance to really fight for your painting rather than you know um, give up and be so discouraged so quickly you're solving problems you're trying to figure it out and um, when you work this way you're, you're, you're solving problems with from from the beginning you're putting something down you're changing it you're um, you know you're, you're uh, thinking you know thinking how it could be how it could improve how can it be done better you're thinking about what you want to do because I, you have a mindset uh, like I said, I tried from the very beginning to keep it within a certain amount of values and to play with the, um, the, the color temperature to give you a more richer feel of color, you know. Um, so there's different ways that you can learn and, and grow from the experience. So again, uh, um, you, yeah, I mean, take the plunge you can give yourself an opportunity to learn something that and um, apply something to your painting that you would not have had you not had the experience of uh, um, of something like this you know so this is the final image like I said I am happier with it um, than I, I was that first day and it's not bad um, I'm just looking forward to what I can do the next time so listen that's gouache 101 Thank you for hanging around. If you like this video, please share it and um, please subscribe. I will be back once again with some more uh, gouache videos next week. All right. This time on Thursday for sure. Bye-bye.